Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, makeup lecture of INST 3016. Um, <clears throat> I hope that you're all well. You and your family and friends uh, are all in good health. Uh, before we get started today I would just like to uh, um, state the fact that uh, although some of the issues we're talking about in this class might seem a little bit uh, out of touch and arcane uh, given the context uh, in which we're living today. I think that uh, at the heart of it all uh, lies a certain idea about uh, self-questioning and a rediscovery of uh, purpose as social beings, uh, so to speak, that um, might have um, some lessons to teach us in the long run. So uh, as we get started today, um, <clears throat> I would like to uh, uh, tell you a couple of things about uh, Václav Havel, uh, the one uh, whose uh, essay, The Power of the Powerless, we are discussing in this lecture. It's something we started doing last time in the class. Uh, and uh, Václav Havel started his career as a, as a playwright, uh, but was forced by the political context uh, in which he lived, which is... Um, the Prague Spring and then the aftermath of that, the signing of the Charter 77 protest movement, was forced into this position of, um, of protest. He became a protest intellectual, one of the, uh, if you want, most representative public intellectuals to come from Central and Eastern Europe to uh, have protested through his writing and through his actions, the uh, actions of the communist state. And uh, in his essay, uh, The Power of the Powerless, which was published in 1979, he uh, takes as a task uh, to uh, uh, deal with this uh, communist society. And uh, what he intends to do in this essay, uh, I think, uh, breaks down into five uh, points that are interrelated. And um, we might come back to some of these ideas in today today's lecture or even later on. Um, first, he tries to define the nature of the communist regimes and show their power structure, how they function and what their reproduction mechanisms are. One thing that strikes him in this essay, and I think it transpires quite clearly, is that no matter where communism uh, comes into power, what country, and no matter the period in which uh, uh, communism exists, there seem to be many similarities, uh, regardless of the people in charge. And this separation between uh, people who are in charge and the regime itself uh, made him realize that um, the, one of the unique characteristics of the communist regimes is that they were able to separate themselves from the people, even from those who were in charge of leading the regime themselves, so that they became some kind of autonomous self-reproducing mechanisms. Uh, another thing that he intends to do is to demonstrate that this regime relies on uh, people's acquiescence to the public lie on which these regimes rely. Uh, one of the basic... Uh, thesis contained in this essay is that um, for the regimes, uh, although they have separated themselves from the people to exist, they still need to rely on the people. Uh, and uh, how people react and how people act in society uh, is um, directly relevant to uh, how well the power structure manages to reproduce itself or not. And that uh, a lot of these power mechanisms rely on people's uh, willingness to participate in it, whether uh, constrained or not. Uh, he uh, also intends to show that this new type of social contract that communist societies uh, go into with their citizens uh, imposes a kind of deal which uh, basically requires for, from the people to participate in the public rituals, in the public lie, in the world of appearances that the communist regimes put forth as their facade in exchange for, a, let's say, relatively normal life. Uh, but that this deal, this, this uh, different type of social contract has in the long run a negative impact in that uh, it makes people uh, rely less on their own personal conscience and on their own um, moral judgments. 
Another important uh, point that Havel intends to do is to propose a solution to this problem. And uh, something that is very central to this essay is that he is interested in offering a simple solution, commonsensical and non-violent. He is writing this essay in the aftermath of uh, some violent attempts to uh, change the social order in Eastern Europe. We're thinking of the Hungarian revolutions, of uh, revolution of 1956, the Prague Spring of 68, both uh, militarily uh, repressed. And he realizes that um, the way to go forward is not through mass protests, is not through uh, mass political organization, but through individual solutions that are simple, uh, available to the simplest members of society that are at the same time commonsensical. They do not require uh, very, if you want, profound knowledge of political theory, of doctrines and so on, and most importantly, non-violent. Uh, and finally, what he intends to do is offer a stern warning to people living in free democratic societies uh, like our own that they too need to free themselves of the convenient lies and complicities that obscure their moral responsibility for the world. This uh, might be a more difficult point to take because uh, unlike the communist societies where the relations of power and uh, the constraint of the individuals is more clearly manifested in this free democratic societies, the individuals seem to be caught in power relations that they perceive to be, um, in a way, free and not forced onto them. However, Havel says, uh, there are aspects of uh, our life in these free societies uh, that might um, make it easier for us to become complacent and to delegate our moral responsibility to other agencies. And probably he singles out two such factors, one being uh, the consumer society, which is a way to create a, a smoke screen that prevents us from, from seeing society at large and from assuming responsibility for the broader social issues. Uh, the other issue is um, the type, the style of making poli politics that is typical to democracy, which uh, gives, in a way, a blank check to uh, uh, populist uh, demagogical politicians who uh, might uh, fool the people with their promises. And uh, he's arguing that people living in such free societies also need to be aware of these risks. As we uh, move on to clarify some of these uh, ideas, we need to relate to some of the language that Havel uses in the essay. And uh, one central concept is this uh, post-totalitarian society. We refer to the Central Eastern Europe societies, the second half of the 20th century, as communist societies, totalitarian societies. But Havel prefers post totalitarian, and there's a reason for that. And that reason relies with the fact that <clears throat> the period in which he is writing this essay is a period known as normalization in Czechoslovakia, roughly after the Prague Spring of 68 until uh, the fall of communism in 1989. And this period of normalization is different from the previous period, which is more clearly totalitarian, in that the regimes are not so brutally repressive, uh, trying to punish or even exterminate people for simply not expressing enthusiastic support uh, for the policies of the Communist Party, but rather more interested in keeping uh, any dissent uh, at bay and keeping all social problems, uh, sweeping them under the rug. Uh, and this, this leads to a type of society that has resigned itself to the inev inevitability of the communist ideological rule uh, to uh, uh, society that uh, has resigned itself to living in a world of appearances, uh, of cynically maintained rituals and lies. And uh, it is this uh, type of deal of social contract that is typical of the post-totalitarian society that, um, that Havel is interested in. Uh, revealing through his essay. And probably the um, um, central part of the essay is taken by uh, this idea of uh, what it means to live within the truth as opposed to living within the lie. Uh, and uh, the green grocer scenario that he's talking about is telling for the reality of this post-totalitarian society. Uh, fundamentally, Havel um, 
describes a situation that was rather common in the Eastern Bloc at the time, which is that of um, tacit acceptance and co-participation of the individuals within the public uh, deception that was the communist regime. And in this case, uh, the simple greengrocer uh, puts in his window a slogan uh, that was common in the communist countries, a slogan that comes from the Communist Manifesto, uh, which is workers of the world unite. Uh, Havel asks, however, certain um, questions about this gesture. What exactly makes the greengrocer do that? Does he really believe in that slogan or is he doing it for other reasons? Uh, Havel concludes that the greengrocer has uh, no uh, personal com political convictions nor do his customers. Therefore, the reason why he uses that very political uh, slogan, a communist slogan, is uh, to basically pay lip service to societal expectations. And the societal expectations in this case are a fundamental um, deception, the lie that all the members of society willingly participate in the communist contract. Um, and uh, uh, Havel um, puts the also hypothetical situation where the greengrocer would stop doing that. What would be the consequences for him if he stopped putting that sign in his window? And he argues that there might be consequences for the greengrocer, such as uh, losing his job, uh, being blacklisted, uh, maybe um, being interrogated. Um, which are all things that a lot of people m would not be willing to accept. Uh, and uh, as a result, they are willing to go ahead and participate in this public lie. However, Havel argues, uh, if citizens do not have the courage to uh, live within the truth and to stop uh, condoning the public lie in which they live, uh, no change is ever going to happen. So all change needs to start with a gesture of courage, an act of accepting to live within the truth, even if it is something small, such as refusing to put a sign in the window. Uh, this is quintessential for understanding how Havel proposes his idea of protest. It is not massive street protests. Uh, it is a small scale protest. It starts from the level of the individual and it starts with this undoing of the, uh, the network of lies at the most basic level. And this is what he expects of all the citizens, even the greengrocers, to do, to stop living within the lie. Uh, another pair of terms that is very relevant for Havel is this uh, opposition between the, what he calls the aims of life and the aims of the system. I do not have enough time and space here to go into the uh, philosophical sources of Havel's thinking in this essay, but uh, I uh, selected a quotation from the actual essay that might hopefully illuminate this idea a little bit better. Um, Between the aims of the post-totalitarian system and the aims of life, there is a yawning abyss. While life in its essence moves toward plurality, diversity, independent self-constitution and self-organization, in short, toward the fulfillment of its own freedom, the post-totalitarian system demands conformity, uniformity and discipline. While life ever strives to create new and improbable structures, the post-totalitarian system contrives to force life into its most probable states. Um, for Havel, the aims of life are therefore uh, compa co uh, compatible with uh, the fundamental principles according to which humans live their lives, regardless of the society in which they live. They all, they all tend, to, uh, tend to be guided by the same um, general principles, such as uh, uh, solidarity, generosity, uh, love, affection, uh, justice and truth. These seem to Havel to be truly um, the goals of all existence, Yeah, intensifying this and uh, obtaining satisfaction from living according to some natural impulses. Um, on the other hand, what the communist system does is to pervert this natural aims of life and to force its own aims upon the citizens. Um, what communism stands out th through is uh, the fact that, uh, as I was mentioning in the previous lecture, 
was interested in um, not just obtaining some kind of social acquiescence from the individuals, but invading their private lives, invading their uh, their thought life, and. It is this um, attempt to colonize this natural aims of life by imposing its own aims that uh, leads to a, situ a situation such as the one lived by the citizens of, of a communist country where these principles um, start to break down and instead they're replaced with, with uh, suspicion and um, envy and fear uh, and lies. And uh, it, it is precisely this opposition between the natural aims of all human living and this uh, substitute aims that are created artificially by the communist system uh, that Havel uh, wants to set in relief. Other uh, terms that he uh, deals with here are opposition and dissident. And um, uh, he intentionally puts the terms in quotation marks because he uh, argues that at the time when the Charter 77 movement started in Czechoslovakia, uh, the Western world perceived this uh, movement as a kind of uh, political opposition to the communist regime. And hence the dissident movement started being labeled as such as a political opposition. He's arguing, however, that this is uh, a misperception or a misunderstanding of um, their actual positions. Uh, he argues that the, the uh, people who signed the Charter 77, some of them intellectuals, but some of them uh, not intellectuals, just um, simple members of society, normal people with different jobs and different positions in society, did not have the intent of creating a political opposition or creating another political party that might push the communists out of power. It was not that what they were after. Instead, what they were trying to do is to um, to make an appeal to a humane and moral society to, uh, in a way, emphasize how important it is to live a life of normalcy, to live a life in within the truth, uh, as he calls it, and uh, within the normal aims of life. Yeah, uh, It is a protest that was not meant to be a protest, so to speak. It is a protest of normalcy against what was fundamentally an abnormal situation. So uh, this idea that the, there is a, a, a paradox here in the title of the essay, The Power of the Powerless. Uh, how can the powerless have any power? Um, of course, the, this is what, what Hava wants to show is that uh, we, the people who live uh, not only in communist societies, but also in free societies, need, although we perceive ourselves as being powerless, we need to look around us and find those places from where we can derive some kind of power. And um, the goal of protest is uh, not to change the rulers, but to recenter the relationship between politics and society around the primacy of individual needs. Uh, what he wants to show through his essay is that citizens need to find again this new type of contract or to redefine the social contract so that it is again about the people and it is not about political ideas and it is not about ideologies. And uh, there's a quotation here to illustrate this point. Uh, we know from a number of harsh experiences that neither reform nor change is in itself a guarantee of anything. We know that ultimately it is all the same to us whether or not the system in which we live, in the light of a particular doctrine, appears changed or reformed. Our concern is whether we can live with dignity in such a system, whether it serves people rather than people serving it. Um, so, as we can see from, from this essay, the, the source of people's power is actually putting themselves again in the center, uh, letting their natural impulses, their uh, general human interests and beliefs to govern the discussion uh, and not becoming themselves just wheels in a, in a, in a depersonalized mechanism of power. Um, uh, thus, well, the question uh, poses itself, what needs to change in order for this um, uh, for this transformation to take effect. Um, 
Havel is interested in a change from the bottom up, so from in a grassroots transformation of society, what we would call a change at the level of civil society. And although he does not mention the term civil society, uh, he uses synonym uh, expressions such as parallel structures, which is something, a term created by another Czechoslovak intellectual at the time, Vaslav Benda, or second culture. Uh, these are, um, if you want, uh, uh, organizations that run parallel to the official organizations of the state in a situation where a party dominates the state and the state has control over everything over publications over public life over private life uh, what needs to happen is for the citizens to start redefining their lives from the bottom up and creating basically a new parallel society in which they can be themselves and they can be free. I have a quotation here that hopefully is uh, indicative of that. What else is it but a nonviolent attempt by people to negate the system within themselves and to establish their lives on a new basis, that of their own proper identity? So concretely, this would translate into a second culture uh, in which um, uh, people participate through their ideas, through their free uh, power of assembly, uh, by exchanging opinions, by participating in artistic events that are independent and not endorsed by the uh, um, official authorities, by the state, uh, partic uh, participating in in uh, uh, consuming samizdat literature or samizdat publications, this being a term uh, that means underground um, uh, publications of books that um, normally would not be allowed to be published in a state-controlled publishing house. Um, th th all these changes uh, that will happen gradually will uh, eventually lead to what Havel calls an existential revolution, so a rediscovery of human purpose beyond the entrapments of modern technological thinking. Um, this is a rediscovery of individual responsibility for the self and the world. It is a way for each individual to turn and face the other members of society in their own true terms and not mediated through the screen of lies which is uh, the communist society. Uh, thus, uh, the goal of any possible change is captured by this idea that a new experience of being, a renewed rootedness in the universe, a newly grasped sense of high responsibility, a newfound inner relationship to other people and to the human community, these factors clearly indicate the direction in which we must go. Finally, the goal for Havel is not so much to change uh, specific societies like the communist societies but to to change societies in general and he proposes here a renewed emphasis on this idea of common good the common good has to be redefined through a, a moral individual uh, lens through the conscience of every single individual um, <clears throat> however this idea of common good uh, for Havel needs to be something that is um, uh, non-ideological but commonsensical rooted in the here and now that means that if we are to achieve a true sense of solidarity and common purpose it is not to be achieved through the means of some political idea or something alien to uh, the individuals but it is through uh, very direct unmediated interactions among individuals so his perspective is in a, in a way very not only non-political but anti-political too uh, in conclusion, uh, Havel demonstrates through this essay that uh, although the times were um, difficult and it looked as if uh, no change was possible uh, and that all large-scale street protests uh, were doomed to fail, in spite of all this, there was still a possibility for small-scale individual protest that started from the level of every single individual who refused at his or her workplace and his or her life to condone the lies to participate in this and thus by undoing this little knots at the bottom the whole network will come apart um, another important idea to take away is that the stakes of this change are not political per se but moral uh, because Havel is turning 
around to some deeper um, human meaning, which is that humans um, need to turn to their moral ideas, to their sense of right and wrong, uh, in order to be able to reconnect again with the people around them. As long as we use ready-made ideas of what is right and what is wrong, and uh, or ideas produced by politicians or if you want by the consumer industry we're not going to be able to be ourselves and this connection will never be authentic uh, finally uh, the crisis of the communist ideology is for Havel a crisis of modernity uh, and evidence of the fact that an attempt to um, to use reason to uh, to structure society uh, beyond if you want individual variation using it to organize society perfectly without any fissure is ultimately going to lead to a kind of totalitarianism uh, which individuals must counter through a reclaiming of their own freedom and their own responsibility so uh, Havel is ultimately telling us that uh, we need to return to our true human natures and to reject the abuses of, of extreme reason and extreme rationality that sometimes politics uh, can uh, put on us uh, and hopefully this will, will um, restart uh, the social contract in a new light a uh, light of a, of, a, of a better a more meaningful and deeper connection among its members thank you